Hi, my name is Sean Bland, but my friends call me Sean Michael or Run Bump. I've run over 300 ultra marathons. I've been first, last, and everything in between. I started and owned Run Bum Races, where we put on 11 trail and ultra running races a year from Central Florida to Southern Virginia. I hope that with my trail running and race directing experience that I can help you train smarter, run further, and fall in love with trail running. If you find this podcast helpful and or entertaining, please help me out by sharing it. I'd also like to invite you to run or volunteer at one of our many races. Welcome friends to the Bend Don't Break podcast. Hey guys, what's up? It is your race director and owner of Run Bum Races, of course, Sean Blanton, aka Sean Michael here. We have a really great podcast today, um, both myself and Deanna Doan, who is a, another race director here at Run Bum Races. Both had the pleasure of going down to Tampa, Florida, or just north there in Brooksville to run the Croom Fools. Uh, she ran the 50K I ran the 16 miler. This was the 27th year they've done this race. Um, it is a staple in uh, Central Florida trail running. Had a blast. It beat me up. Uh, I also beat Deanna up a lot. Uh, she took the win overall um, for the whole 50K race, not just the women's. Um, so that was really cool. We'll talk with her in a little bit. And I uh, just wanted to, we've been having a crazy busy schedule here lately. I uh, just got off the Georgia death race. Uh, Deanna was up there helping out and didn't sleep uh, for literally the whole weekend and kind of was sleeping three, four five hours every night, you know, about a week, either side of that. Um, my watch um, that I've, my GPS watch I've started wearing again, really just kind of for heart rate training. Uh, we'll try to get into that later on and some, uh, subsequent episodes. Um, but you know, I wear it, it has a, I wear it while I sleep monitors, my sleep, you know, schedule, all that stuff like that, you know, deep sleep, REM sleep. I don't know how accurate that is regardless though. Um, on Friday and Saturday night, I went back and looked at it of Georgia death race and it had no recorded sleep data. Why? Because I didn't go to sleep and I actually don't use caffeine. So that's pretty crazy. Um, I, mean, I could do a half an episode on sleep deprivation and how to deal with that. And maybe we'll talk about it in the future. Um, but, you know, coming off GDR, being absolutely just beat up and tired, I was supposed to go run the Gorge Waterfalls 50K, um, which I've had the absolute pleasure of and luck to be able to do that um, twice before. That's in uh, Columbia River Gorge in Oregon, so Oregon side of that. However, like five, six years ago, they had this awful, awful uh, user cause fire, uh, the Eagle Creek fire, it burned down a lot of uh, the gorge and not just burn it down, but like burn it to the ground, like where there weren't even stumps for trees. It burned very, very, very hot. And uh, it literally like a lot of the trails washed out. You had trees across it. So it was shut down for years. They've altered the course slightly. Um, but needless to say, it's an awesome 50K. Daybreak Racing puts that on. Shout out to Jeremy at Daybreak Racing. Love you, dude. Jeremy Long, you're the man. Go run some of their races if you're out in the Oregon, Washington area. But uh, I looked at the forecast, and it was like a high of 42, low of 33, and raining the entire time, which is par for a lot of the uh, Pacific Northwest, especially this time of year in quote-unquote spring. Um you know, so I chose not to go do that. And really, I, uh, Deanna talked me into going down to Tampa and running the Croom Fools run. I love Andy, uh, Andy, excuse me, Andy and Amy Matthews races, A1A Ultras. They also are part in the Tampa races. Um, so check that out. They're awesome race directors, awesome people. Andy just finished a 240 mile lollipop where he did. He started uh, on the beach on the east coast of Florida at Hope Sound and took the Lake to Ocean Trail, uh, which would be Ocean to Lake, that direction, uh, all the way to Lake, Lake Op uh, Okeechobee, Lake O, and then ran all the way around it on the Lost Trail, Lake Okeechobee Scenic Trail, and then ran back on the Lake to Ocean Trail. So that is insane. You are the man. Um, it just seems like that guy gets better with age. So 
I volunteered a bunch of their races, uh, you know, maybe not a bunch, but three, four times had a blast every time a great community. So I kind of was like, man, I'm, I'm feeling good. I've been training, getting back from my injuries and I wanted to just go throw down. Uh, so the 16 miler was a single loop. Uh, the 50 K was two loops. They had a 50 miler, which was like a five mile or so loop at the beginning. And then you do three, uh, you then do three, um, loops of the 16 miles thereabouts. So, um, that was really cool. Um, so let's talk about the race. Oh, I flew down to Tampa. It was super, super, uh, beautiful just to get back down there. Typically I'm that, uh, that snowbird that comes down there during the winter. And this is kind of for central Florida. It's kind of like starting to get really, really warm. Um, so I was looking at the forecast. It's supposed to be in the high eighties. And I was like, Oh my God, this is going to be brutal. Thankfully I, uh, the race was, uh, early enough in the morning. We started at like 7am, literally like slightly in the dark, but right as the day was breaking. So it was fine. Um, I had every intention to come down here and run as fast as I can, uh, try to win the race. If, you know, whoever I was running against, you know, if I was obviously, if I was quicker than them, I had looked at previous results, uh, didn't really know anything about the course other than it's like, look kind of hilly in the beginning, kind of hilly at the back end in the middle, look pretty flat, asked a bunch of people. They kind of reiterated that a couple of people mentioned sand. And I was like, well, I've been out there. I didn't think it was that sandy. So I didn't really think too much about it, but I asked like what shoes I should wear. So I went with my innovate X talons, which are essentially a racing flat with a claw on the bottom of it. There's zero rock protection at all. Um, you're pretty much running in, you know, really nice form fitting, um, you know, shoe I wear, I play soccer in this, uh, you know, just for the grip. So, uh, I knew that'd be all right. Um, so when we, uh, you know, the cool part about it was the 50 K and the 16 miler start at the same time. So if you are middle, like anybody who's not racing, the 16 miler, you kind of got thrown in the, with everybody. So like you really didn't know who was running what around you unless you asked them. So that always adds like kind of the challenge of it. And we'll talk to Deanna about that here in a little bit. Um, but for me, I, I, you know, have no problem taking off in the front of a, a race and holding my own pace. Um, I kind of like to test just to kind of see like who all is running with me. I kind of look around, look people, see what's going on, see who looks fit, um, fit enough, you know, it's like, and you never know, that's not always a good indicator. Um, but again, I showed up wanting to race this fully. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we took off the first three quarters of a mile is downhill on a road. Um, very easily kind of went out front with another guy. We started talking, um, I forget the guy's name, but, uh, super nice guy. Um, from Melbourne, I believe. And, uh, he's a triathlete, which, uh, for me, that's added motivation right there. Cause as a true trail, uh, ultra and mountain runner, I never like to lose to, uh, triathletes. It's got, you know, it's just, you know, fun thing, you know, but, uh, yeah. So we took off downhill and I was like, okay, we're kind of cruising at like maybe a just under a six minute pace. And I was like, you know what? As soon as we hit a little steeper downhill, I just kind of leaned forward and did my mountain running thing, kind of took off, maybe drop a couple a couple seconds off that and uh, figuring that I might, you know, this would be a good time to test the guy, right? So uh, he actually responded and then jumped in front of me. So at that point, I pretty much let off. And then we hit this uh, sandy road. There's another guy behind us. I, I know not to push through sand. So... Uh, unsolicited advice, depending on how thick the sand is, how deep it is, is you want to take shorter steps. You don't want to push. Um, you can really pull, like you tend to pull more in the sand um, with your hamstrings, which can really tend to lead to some other issues. Um, so I didn't want that to happen. Um, and after about another, about a half mile after the sand, so about a mile and a quarter in, we hit single track, which we would be on subsequently for the rest of the race, which was awesome. Very, very scenic, very beautiful, a lot of pine flatwoods, um, rolling hills, just absolutely gorgeous. And pretty soon after this, we began to pass people who were running on the 50 miler because it started an hour before us. 
Um, that was really cool. Uh, they were cheering us on, got to encourage them as well. Really, really enjoyed that. And about, I would say about two and a half miles in, I went back and looked at my like uh, splits and stuff. Um, the guy, uh, the tryout Philly guy, sorry to call you that, but uh, he took off and I looked down and kind of was like just assessing myself of how, you know, what my perceived effort was. And I just said, you know, like, I don't think I can hang on to that the whole race. So I just let him go and let that be um, good advice for whether you're middle, the pack, back and pack, anybody, if you're running with somebody, know your own abilities, know where you are, especially early in a race, always err on the side of caution. Um, you know, if you're racing a race, we see the majority of like course records, uh, wins, et cetera, et cetera. Typically, uh, it, the person is going to lead almost the whole race or, you know, after the first 25% of the race, they're going to be in the lead all the way to the end. So, um, you know, that is something to be aware of. Um, so, but at the same token, it's like everyone is going to slow down. Even with the person winning, they're still going to hit a uh, positive split, most likely. So, I'm a very consistent runner. Uh, I'm able to like hang on an effort, a pace, you know, and just ride that plateau like until the cows come out. Um, so that was my goal. My game plan was to kind of let that guy go, run my own race, um, have fun, smile, um, you know, encourage other people and definitely did that. Um, as I started getting like six, seven miles in, the course kind of started to ease up um, and I was able to really you know, throw down some like six 40 minute miles, which felt really good, you know, coming off the injuries I've been dealing with, you know, after tearing a ligament in my foot, which is still very much not there. My toes literally do like that. So I was excited about that. Um, but the course itself, it was like real soft sand. But like, if you looked at the trail, you wouldn't really think that it's soft sand because a lot of it was like covered by, um, was covered by, uh, leaves or pine needles. Um, as I said, we were running through the flatwoods a, a lot and, um, you know, it was very deceptive. And I, I would say that I probably ran maybe 60% of that race, not in the middle of the trail. Like I was off to the side of the trail. So it's like, not only was I trying to run all out, but I was also zigzagging almost like a half pipe in some points and was just like, here's the middle of the trail. I'm over here or I'm over there. So it was kind of like you're hopping over little shrubs, just, you know, my legs got all cut up, you know, just not caring. So that, that was kind of interesting. Um, and then I go back again, how can you benefit from me telling you this is I had no idea that was happening. Um, but in the moment I adapted to that, you know, there are spots where I was like, oh, this isn't fun you know, because I was pushing so hard and the sand was so relentless, it was really hurting my body. Um, but it's like, at the end of the day, I always say, it's like, all right, you know, even if I'm feeling really bad out here, there's so many people that wish they were out here feeling bad and how blessed and how lucky I am to be out here to do this. So uh, I can't tell you how beautiful the sunrise was uh, through the, the pines uh, the longleaf pines, it's just amazing. Like if you've never run in Florida, I, I think that to me is one of the, especially when I did the Florida trail, it's probably one of the things that really stands out in my mind of just being quintessential Florida trail running is being on a single track trail, watching the sunrise through the, the, the longleaf pine flatwoods. Um, you know, it just lights up in these orange and yellow. It's incredible. Usually like there's a, like a low lying fog or a mist, same thing. I mean, it was just absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, that was really nice. Watch the sunrise. And then, then kind of about seven miles in kind of started to kick it up. I'm like, maybe I can catch this guy if I just run consistent. And I was like, I knew there was Hills on the back end. Um, and I was like, maybe I can catch this guy on the back end. So that's kind of how I was, um, you know, running my race. I got through a manned aid station. They're like, what do you need? What do you need? Literally nothing. Uh, for a 16 mile race, I did not drink a single drop of water. There was no reason. It was not overly hot. I was out there for an hour and 51 minutes. Uh, okay. Um, prehydration is key on something like that, especially when it's going to be really hot. Um, what I did do was for the three um, aid stations or water drops, uh, one of them was manned, two of them were unmanned, is I just stopped and poured all of the water that I could 
like just for a quick brief second on my head, rubbed it all over me. It was cold water. I think some of it had ice and it felt great. Just cool me down a little bit and then took off, kept going. At no point ever did I feel like overheated, hot, warm. Um, we kind of got uh, really good luck for that. Yeah, what I thought and hoped for was happening, which was I was staying consistent and now picking it up. Maybe the guy in front of me was blowing up. I don't know. Um, but I also knew that that back half of my cor- the course with the hills was going to be like me eating breakfast uh, with those hills. So that that was my game plan. Um, however, best laid plans of mice and men often go awry, as we know. And, uh, you know, somewhere around that point, I all of a sudden just started experiencing really sharp pain in the bottom part of my right knee. In fact, four days later, I still have it. Um, I tried to go for a run last night, a group road run, and ended up walking back after two and a half miles. Um, but that sand kicked my butt. And yeah, it just all of a sudden it's like I, you could see with my heart rate, spiked it, and then it drops way off. It's because I started having just horribly, knee, horrible knee pain. I was like, okay, I'm going to push through this, but I'm not going to hurt myself. Um, and then, you know, a couple of minutes later, I came over the, I crested one hill and I actually saw the guy up in front of me, which was just like, oh, it was just so frustrating. Um, but, uh, you know, the guy ran a hell of a race and, you know, you never know, like you catch up with somebody, it's like, you know, they, they probably still have like a sprint left in them. They, maybe they probably get you, you know, you never know, but it's like, I really would have loved to push that guy, um, you know, which would have ultimately pushed myself. I say this time and time again, competition is awesome, brings the best out in you, um, brings the best out in other people. Um, that's what these races that we do are for test, you know, it's a proving ground to ourselves. It's like, you know, it's like, I don't know that guy I may never see him again, dude. Thank you for an awesome race. You pushed me like crazy. You killed it. That was so much fun. Um, and it was funny cause I knew that I was, uh, you know, getting close to the finish. Cause there was like this long gradual hill, which I would have loved to just hammer up. And I kind of just like hobble jogged it and again. It's just like, my heart felt fine. My heart rate had dropped back down into like one thirties. And I was just kind of just like, I do not like, it was just a lot of pain. So I'm hoping nothing's like permanently messed up. I don't think it is. I think it's just like a weird stability overuse thing. Um, that's definitely, that's the longest I've run pretty much nonstop. Um, I mean, I ran the whole thing nonstop. That was my whole goal. So even when I was in pain, I was like, I'm still going to jog. Uh, but I, that's the longest I've run nonstop and almost a year, I would guess, you know, I've run 50 K's and all this stuff, but you take lots of breaks. So the way I got to look at it is like super positive, um, uh, improvement for me. I'm happy to be out there, happy to meet people. I hung out for 11 hours after that. Andy probably hates me. I was basically cursing at the finish line, tell him how much I hate sand. I'll never do that again. But it was, it really was a, it was a good race and um, great course and really beautiful. And it just, uh, you know, the other thing I'll say is on uh, part of it, we got on the Florida Trail, uh, which is the western corridor of it. It's not what I did for the Florida Trail FKT uh, back in 2020. But anytime I'm following that orange blaze, it just, I don't know, something, it just gives me that tingle deep in my body. Um, and I get excited. In fact, when I first turned on the Florida trail, that's when I started picking it up more. I was like, you know, not on my trail, <laughs> you know, um, but enough about my run. Uh, I'm just telling you, I was trying to relate, you know, um, I was happy about that coming off an of injury. Um, so we're going to have Deanna on here in a second. Um, Right now, we do have, the other day, we opened up the Georgia Death Race, 74-ish mile trail run. This will be year 12 in 2024. The race was two weekends ago. Uh, We already have close to 400 people registered. I think there's less than 10 spots. If you think you want to do it, go register. It is the best and worst times. Um, I tell people this all the time. If you want to go run an ultra, anybody can go do a 50 K with a little bit of training and a lot of walking and proper nutrition for sure. Um, or not anybody, most people, you know, it's awesome, right? You'll get to the, you know, you'll have some ups and downs. The further you go, the highs get higher, the lows get lower. And that's why we chase this rab never ending rabbit hole or some of us do. And uh, Georgia death race. I almost guarantee that at multiple spots during the race, you will question why you run, you'll question your life, whatever you're holding on to, whatever is afflicting you, you will 
be forced to just let it go. And there's just so much beauty in that. Uh, so check that out. Also, what just went on sale this past week uh, as well is the Sky to Summit 50K, 25K. This is awesome. We have a 95% finisher rate or thereabout uh, for the 50K, 25K. This is year 11 this year. Um, so one of four races I've put on 11 times, GDR, Sky to Summit, Helen Holiday, uh, half marathon, and then of course, Yeti Nightmare. Um, so this was the first 50K I ever did ever. It's uh, northeastern corner of North Georgia, Sky Valley, the highest city in Georgia. This is also the highest trail race in Georgia. And I would say definitely the most scenic. It is beautiful. It is breathtaking. 360 degree views of three different states. You can see South Carolina, North Carolina, of course, Georgia. Um, you know, you go up to almost 4,600 feet. It is awesome. 7,500 feet of climbing for the 50K. I think like about 3,500 for the 25K. It is awesome. Run this. There's waterfalls. Um, it's a destination race. Bring your family. Bring your friends. Bring your group of girls. Bring your group of your boys. Um, yeah, come on. We'd love to have you. So without further ado, I really want to introduce um, – and say some positive things about this person. Before I introduce her, uh, this is Deanna Doan. Um, she's now on Team Run Bum Races. She is one of my co-race directors. Um, it's always, always a pleasure to have um, you know female uh, race directors alongside of me. Uh, I think it's just something that needs to happen. Um, I always appreciate having that you know female viewpoint on things. As a guy, there's not there's certain things that maybe I don't understand or I can't relate to, or people can't relate to, to me. And the whole point of these races is to try to inspire people, not only to run further, harder, faster, but to just do better at life. And, you know, I feel like I can only preach to, you know, so many people or so many people can only relate with me. So uh, I'm very happy to have Deanna as part of our team. Um, she's an inspiration to me. Uh, she's actually, as a vegan, I still eat meat. Um, but she's definitely inspired me to eat better, eat healthier, take better care of myself. So I hope in the subsequent and upcoming uh, events and months, you'll see more of her and she can help inspire you to do the same. So Deanna, uh, all the way from Jacksonville Beach, uh, Jack's Beach, let's say a big shout out, big thank you to you. You're amazing. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, man, thanks for having me on here. I'm stoked, so. Right on. I, I appreciate the uh, the denim, you know, on a on a Monday. Got my jean jacket. <laughs> yeah, what's going on in the background over here? Are you going to Alaska? Oh, this is my um, National Park tapestry. Oh. I love national parks, so got to oh, okay. kind of represent. You know, I could, it's, got, it's the whole United States. Oh, sweet. So, but you, I've got you, Alaska right here. And Are then all nine, there's nine national parks in Alaska. Has really? the most national parks of all the states. So if you learn nothing else during the podcast, there you go. Alaska. <laughs> yeah. And go. most of them are so remote, you can only get there by plane or boat. So there's only wow. two you can actually drive to. Denali. So, yep. And hold on, hold on. Is, I want to say, hmm. K9 Fords. I Fjords? think. I'm actually not sure what the Maybe? other one okay. was, but Denali Whatever. for sure. Somebody check that Either out. Way. Fact check us. Mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so hey, congratulations. Like what a what an epic race. Um, I mean, you just absolutely crushed it. And I felt really bad because as you've come on with Run Bum to help direct, uh, you were supposed to run long play early March. However, we had a race and I needed help with that. And so you uh, very nicely decided to run this race instead. So let's talk about this Kroom Fools Run and, and uh, kind of how it went and uh, for you. Sure. Well, um, I was originally going to do a long play, but then once you know you reached out and needed the help for your Yeti night race, I, I had reached out to Andy, who's the race director for the Kroom Fools Run, as well as Long Play, and I had kindly asked him to push it to see if I could do the Kroom Fools Run instead, um, which I think actually ended up working out in my favor because it gave me four extra weeks to really train for this race, because this was my first race after running Forgotten Florida 100 Miler. And so, you know, 
long play was only four weeks after that hundred. And, you know, I might've been a little in over my head on that to just go out that quickly after a race, you know, that long, but it really, you know, it kind of, it worked out. I'm really glad, you know, I was able to get this 50 K done and I got a little more time to train for it too. Nice. So when you like start like morning of the race or even week of the race, was your plan to like go all out and race this? Or were you just like, Oh, I'm going to go out and have fun. No, I wanted to race this. Um, this was my first real 50 K that I'd signed up for in a little over a year. And so I definitely had the goal in mind to go fast. I did want a PR. I definitely was not planning to win outright. So, you know, that was really awesome. But ultimately, I wanted to challenge myself, push myself and see what I was capable, you know, of putting out there because, you know, 50 Ks, I haven't, you know, hadn't done one in so long. And my only my PR before this actually happened to be my first ever 50 K. And wow. so that was, you know, over almost three years ago. And so, you know, I definitely was, had done a handful of other 50 Ks, you know, in the past few years, but I really wanted this one to be a good one and just, you know, see what I could do. And you crush it. You did like 419.30 or thereabouts, um, mm -hmm. which is insanely fast. I don't know what that is. What is that like an eight minute mile, basically? It averaged out to like eight and a half, 840 wow. minute mile. Wow. And so, so take us through like what the actual, because you, so for those people that weren't there, don't know, it's um, a single loop for the 16 mile, two loops for the 50 K and both of those races start together. There's also a 50 mile that started an hour before us. They do like a, I think a five or so mile loop, something like that, maybe slightly more. Mm -hmm. And then they jump in on the 16 mile loop and they do it three times. So when we were running, like when you start, it was right at the break of day, still kind of a little dark. You basically run down this road for like three quarters of a mile, take a right on a, a sandy, very sandy road. And then it's kind of single track after like the first, what, mile and a quarter for the rest of the, the loop. And you don't do that road section on the second loop. So it's basically after the first mile and a quarter for the 50 K you're, I guess, all single track for the, for the rest of it, maybe. Yeah. All single track. And, um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of difficult. I would think if you're running the 50 K is like, you don't really know who's doing what race. So you mm -hmm. kind of just got to run your own thing. Right. Oh yeah. I definitely was not sure. You know, um, I wasn't sure of my place really until the end when I got into that last aid station and they're like, you're leading. And I was like, Oh shit. Well now I really got to keep going. <laughs> Cause at that point, you know, it was, you know, getting to be late morning and the sun was really coming out and the heat was just starting to really get to me. So. Yeah, it was what I found really interesting. Uh, again, not being used to the heat at all. Heat didn't bother me, but I was only running 16 miles for the first two hours, heat was not a factor at all. But when you guys went out there on that second uh, loop, as soon as the sun like started coming over a little bit, I mean, what was the high? The high was like 88 for the day. It was completely choked out in humidity. Uh, I mean, it's just typical central Florida, you know, freak kind of a little freakish for this time of year, but still it's fl central Florida. You never, you never have any idea. How did, um, you know, going out on that second loop, how, how did the heat affect you? And what did you do to try to to try to mitigate that? I mean, I definitely was pouring like cold water on me at all the water stops, just like over my head, in my hat, you know, down my neck, the back of my neck. Um, and that helped a lot, but I definitely made sure I was having enough electrolytes as well. You know, I was drinking a lot of Tailwind and then towards the end I had some Gatorade and that, you know, that helped, but really it's hard to escape because there were so many sections of that trail that were not shaded. And so you're pretty exposed. And, you know, once the sun really starts peeking out, I mean, you're just, you're just starting to get fried <laughs> out there. For, for but, sure. But the cold, you know, the cold water pouring on your head helps a lot. I wish there had been ice. I definitely would have put ice in my hat and in my shirt because I definitely, that's something that I'll do during a hot race as well. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, for me, when I'm in the heat 
and it still wasn't hot for me. Again, only doing 16 miles. My whole thing is just, I always tell people if it's hot, stay wet, you know, dump water Mm -hmm. all over you. Maybe you get chafes, chafed a little bit, but you should add extra, whatever you use, body glide, Vaseline, sports shield, salty, whatever you Mm -hmm. use, have more of that, but just keep dumping it on you. And, uh, you know, that's what I try to do the whole time. Anytime I got to one of those, whether it was manned or unmanned, just dump water on me and just kind of try to cool your temperature. Cause you can only take in so much water and drinking a bunch of water kind of doesn't fully cool you off. Like you need external like uh, cooling for that. Like you're saying, um, what about the sand, man? I destroyed. Me. Oh my God. I was not expecting that much sand on that trail. Like, you know, I definitely heard that a lot about Croom. This is my first time out at Croom. And I definitely heard that it was a bit hilly. And I say hilly as a Floridian, right? Because, you know, you joke about hilly, right? Yes. <laughs> For our races. But as a Floridian, it was hilly. And I'd heard about that, but I never really was expecting that much sand. And it was not fun. Um, it didn't quite mess me up as badly as I thought it would. And maybe that's just because, you know, I live close to the beach here up in, you know, Jacksonville Beach. I run on the beach quite a bit to get miles. I also run trails um, here at Guana Preserve, which those trails are quite sandy. So maybe I was used to it a little bit more. But in a race setting, I did not like that (laughs) at all. (laughs) Because I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to go all out and really just put it out there and be faster. And it just it definitely slowed me down a little bit and it, I definitely overexerted myself on that. I think. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely felt that again, did not go as far as you obviously, (laughs) but trying to go really fast on the 16 mile loop. I found myself, I'm like, I'm just guesstimating probably 60% of the time I was actually running, uh, not on the middle of the trail. So I was like running, on the edges of it or like off completely off the trail to try to get, you know, a harder uh, surface to run on. Like that was very, very interesting. You know, again, not anything I've never encountered before, but for like, I would say probably 14 of the 16 miles of that loop were, were like that maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe 13. Um, And I could, I went back and looked at my pace and I saw your pace. It was kind of like the same thing, like the same mileages. Same area. Slower. <laughs> yeah. Cause it would be like sandier or, and I also found it was, it was, and again, I, I didn't, I had no idea, you know, so I'm glad I wore the shoes that I wore. I wore some like innovates that were like very aggressive claws. Um, I also like, now that we're talking about it, it's like, people are like, Oh man, sand is so bad. And it's like, okay, whatever. It's part of it. It was, this trail was absolutely beautiful. Um, it was definitely worth it, but people try to push through sand and you can't, it's like, you need to shorten your stride and take like, you know, just be lighter on your feet. So if you're taking these big strides, trying to push through the sand, a you're going to cook your hamstrings, which I did, uh, anyways. Oh, oh, my hamstrings and glutes were feeling it that second loop towards the end for sure. (laughs) We're two days later. I'm still like, I can walk today, but like, I definitely can't go run, you know, like my, Oh yeah, no, I'm doing yoga tonight and that's it for me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I find that people, you know, with sand is you got to just shorten up the strides and everything, you know? And it was interesting too, because there are sections that weren't sandy, but there was a lot of like, like leaves on them from the fall. It was like Oak leaves. And it was just really slick. I don't know mm. if you felt that too. Yeah, sort of in the, like the B, I think it was like around like mile five or six, there was that like kind of really shaded like oak hammocky section that was like almost like felt like you were going into a ravine. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot, there was a lot of leaf litter in that, like going down that hill was almost, like you said, it was slick. And I definitely couldn't go quite as fast going down those hills because I was like, I'm not about to fall out here and eat it. <laughs> yeah. I really liked um, getting on the Florida trail. That's like the Western corridor of the Florida trail goes through there, which I actually didn't realize. Um, so it was like kind of, I don't know, for my run at least, like when I got on that orange blaze, it, I was just smiling. I was like grinning ear to ear. And that was kind of nicer because the Florida trail as a whole, it tries to take a more shaded route. So they try to follow like the oak hammocks. So you'll kind of wind around with all the big trees and it's like you could – 
very obvious. It was very obvious, like, cause we were running in the the flatwoods for a while. And, uh, I don't know about you, but I had like a beautiful sunrise and it's like, it's kind of like springtime, all the oak trees, the saplings were like vibrant green. The sun is coming up behind that. It's like orange and yellow. And I was just like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. I just There's want like to stop. a little bit of like a foggy haze going on. Yes. Like yes. just like that springtime kind of feeling. It was beautiful. Yes. I loved yes. it. All the feelings. Yes. So I saw you come in to the halfway point. So every loop, uh, which obviously is just for the first loop, you actually do a little out and back that's like mm-hmm. maybe a hundred yards. You come to the finish area, cross the timing map, there's an aid station, and then you go back out. As you came in, um, you grabbed some stuff, you know, took about a minute or so. Then the second place female was right there. She came in and actually she was like like 10 seconds turned around. And as soon as you guys left on the second loop, you guys were literally together. Oh, and I didn't realize she left. I saw her come in right as I was leaving. And yes. I wasn't sure how long she was going to take at that turnaround. But you, she did leave Literally right after five I seconds. Oh, she, she was right on your tail. So I was like, oh, man. And I even said, I'm like, we've got a race. And it's like, I oh, don't man. think people are paying attention. But I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> I Yeah, I definitely didn't realize that because I had passed her around mile 13. And so, but the thing was, like you said, we all start at the same time. So I wasn't sure if she was running the 16 mile or the 50K. Right. So of course I tell myself she's running 50 K I need to stay ahead. Right. Because my little bit of competitive side starts to, you know, come out. Um, but then once I came in, grabbed my stuff and left, I saw her come in. I could definitely tell that she wasn't finished and she was doing the 50 K. So, but I didn't realize she left so quickly after me, but that wow. definitely motivated me to, to keep pushing and just, you know, just, just keep going steady. You know, I didn't push it too hard I would say like what like at what point during the race were you like when you started you obviously you want to do well but at what point were you like like did you have anybody pass you at any point even early on and were you like oh hell no or were you just like kind of I'm doing my thing and then started to kind of pick people off or or what um no one ever passed me during the race I definitely passed a good bit of people Um, Like the first 10 miles, I definitely passed several people who I assume were running the 50K. And then I started passing some of the people who were running the 50 miler, which they started an hour before us. So that was like, it was hard to tell if they were on their second loop already, or if they were still just going slower because they were running 50 miles. Um, But I definitely started picking a few people off. And then I ended up passing the other girl who ended up finishing after me, you know, around mile 13. But then pretty much after I passed her, I didn't, you know, I passed a couple other 50 mile people, but I didn't really see anyone after that. Like I was pretty much alone and no one passed me. So, so like on that second loop, like, you know, all of a sudden you're like, oh man, there's this other girl that's coming in and you're like, now you're racing her. Once you went out on the second loop, did you see like anybody or were you pretty much just alone? I was pretty much just alone. (laughs) Wow. And so I just kept trying to find, you know, keep my mind in a good space and just sort of like, I call it, you know, putting yourself, your body in cruise control and just maintain that. Keep eating, keep drinking, keep moving. I did not stop much. You know, I did stop to pee once. And then I made that like super quick because I kept turning around. Like I wasn't sure how far behind anyone was of me. And I definitely, at that point, I definitely wanted to, you know, podium. (laughs) Because nobody wants to lose a race or get passed while they're using a, the bathroom during, during never, race. no. Because that's that would just be terrible. <laughs> no. So, so you run all this. So, did you feel like at any point like you were kind of running scared or like, okay, man, I've got five miles now. I just need to like go as hard as I can so nobody catches me. Like, um, you know, I definitely had it in my mind, thinking like, okay, last three miles, I'm going to push it because I know I can, um, and just keep my place essentially. But of course, as you know, ultras and just these long races, anything can happen and go wrong. And more often than not, you're probably going to feel worse if you keep pushing yourself harder than you should and bonk out at some point. And at that point for me was like mile 27, 28, the heat and the sand and just 
I think I was a little behind on nutrition and hydration. It had caught up and I was definitely getting tired. I was, I slowed down a little bit, not like terribly, but at that point, like mentally, I was like, I really wanted to go faster, but I just, I didn't have it in me. My legs were just getting so shot. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the sand and the heat. Yeah. I, I'm I mean, sure. yeah, I, 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 but at that point too, I knew, like, I kept just like looking at my watch and checking like, okay, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. No one's passing me. If I can just like keep this up, like at this point, like I'm probably set. So that motivated me. And I, you know, I felt pretty good about that. That's awesome. So uh, obviously I mentioned this earlier, um, you know, you're vegan. That's cool. Um, I'm not, but you are. And, and uh, I appreciate that. And my question to you is, you know, how, like, what do you eat during a race and what recommendations do you have for people who are maybe vegetarian or vegan on, you know, how to nourish themselves during an ultra? Um, so I do try to focus on more whole foods during races. So I'll eat a lot of like, you know, and it depends on the distance of the race too. Right. So for something like a 50 K, which, you know, you could say is a shorter distance ultra, I definitely eat a little less food than I normally would for a longer race. Um, I'm eating simple stuff. Like, of course, we go through the aid stations. I'm eating a lot of bananas or oranges, but I also love having either Lara bars or Go Macro bars. And then I also will eat dried fruit leathers. So, like, dried mango is great. What? Leather? Yeah, they're, like, dehydrated, like, fruit bars that are made out of, like, apples, strawberries, blueberries. Like, I mean, you Uh, get... You know what I mean? It's just like jerk. It's like fruit jerky, essentially. Like so dried mango eat, and stuff like that? Yeah, I'll have dried mango. Like, I love having that. And then, like, the, the dried fruit bars, you know, bananas, fruit. Um, I definitely will do tailwind for calories and electrolytes. And then some spring energy gels are good. And then I'll also have applesauce packs or those. Um, they also make these chia seed fruit packs, too which it kind of feels like an applesauce pack, but they have different fruit flavors and chia seeds. So I'll eat a lot of those during like a 50 K for example. What about like a hundred miler? Cause like, obviously you need more like calories during something like that. I'll definitely, I'll prep, I'll do a lot more prep for a race like that. And so, and I'll also want more savory things. So I'll usually make like rice balls. Um, I'll get like, I'll have like peanut butter jellies, more like sandwiches too, I guess. So I'll make hummus wraps. I love those. Avocado wraps are always awesome at aid stations. Uh, I'll roast potatoes before or sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. I will make lentil soups. Those are good. And I'll put them in like these reusable baby food pouches. And I'll also prep oatmeal in baby food pouches. And I'll eat those as well. But it depends. And if I have a crew, I'll have them cooking me like ramen noodles and veggie broth. Or they'll have them cook me rice and veggie broth. That's a really good option for a longer distance race, but you know, it depends. I'll really only have a crew for like a hundred miler. So anything less than that, I'll just pack out most of my food and do drop bags. And so I'll prep things and just eat whatever I can at aid stations, you know, pretzels, chips, like, I don't know, my stomach's usually pretty good and I can eat most of whatever I want. That's awesome. As long as it's vegan, right? As long as it's vegan. It's like, can you tell like real talk, like if somebody like, slip some bacon or something had like some animal fat in that like can you tell like are you like oh god dude I would probably be able to tell and I'd probably get sick because my stomach hasn't had that in like 10 years so long like it would definitely mess me up in a race yeah or like dairy that would mess me up like I can't do dairy either so okay so let's segue into talking about so now obviously you've been doing um provide like making chili and food and stuff like that. You went through, you got your food handlers license, I believe is what it's called. Um, and now you do stuff at not only farmers markets, but you're doing stuff at races like the day after this, when you're probably all, um, crippled and everything, uh, <laughs> you're out there at, uh, was it operation freedom? It was, it was called operation outdoor freedom. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and it was a trail race, you know, in Jacksonville that helped support um, wounded veterans, getting them out in the great outdoors and just better access to, you know, those type of things. Um, That's and awesome. essentially I'm like catering events. And then I have a pop-up kitchen for farmer's markets, serving hot food, 
catered items, some cold things to take home and things like that. All vegan, you know, all stuff that like I would want to eat and want to buy and stuff that's healthy and like is good for you and also delicious because my goal, my goal is not for everyone to be vegan, but it's, you know, to kind of open people's minds to try new things and realize that, you know, you can have like plant-based foods, you know, be delicious and also much healthier for you than, you know, a lot of the options at markets, like, you know, food trucks that are just having deep fried stuff. That's right. And a lot cheaper, I will say most of the time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I try to make my prices very reasonable so that like anyone can afford it because I want like good, clean, healthy food to be more accessible to the community. I love it. Yeah. And so it was funny because I forget how, how you like sent this to me, but you were like, Oh yeah. Like I, I've won chili competitions with my vegan chili. I'm like, what? Like, I was like, yeah. I haven't, cause I have stomach problems. So I was like, I haven't been able to eat chili in years. It's like, I can't do onions or garlic. Can you hook me up? And she's like, yeah, 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 fine. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll try this. I'm serious. It was, it blew me out. Of, it blew it out of the water. Like I was just like, this is so good. Um, such complex flavors. And um, so I was like, we, we got to have this at like, you know, some run bum races. And then you brought it to, I guess, wild Florida um, back in November, I believe. Yep. And then what else do we do? Cloudland. Cloudland. Yeah. Or Cloudland. And people loved it. It's so good. And it's funny because as somebody who's not vegan uh, and I have nothing against you know, Hey, do whatever you want. That's cool. I I support a lot of that. Um, but somebody who's not vegan, it's kind of always funny because, you know, we always have the joke of like, yeah, well we want meat or bacon or whatever. And yeah, I love all that stuff, you know, whatever that's all in good fun. But I think a lot of people are hesitant to try vegan things because you think it's going to be like a bowl of lentils that has no taste. And Deanna has really opened my eyes, um, to the, that's just not true. You know, um, yeah. So I think what that's, you're doing is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. That's always my goal is to change people's minds. Right. Yeah. And I thought it was so awesome. Like at the races, like so many people, you know, were loving it, but also more importantly, like all these media dudes were like telling me like, you know, this is some of the best chili I've had, like just straight up, you know, vegan or not like this stuff, it's just really good. And that to me, like, I felt like I was winning at that point. I'm going to tell know? you right now what needs to happen is one of my good buddies you know him, Andy Sneller. I think we need to have a chili off between Deanna's vegan chili and his full meat, probably overly meat heavy oh chili. I love it because <laughs> he, he's the guy that's like, and I love Andy. He's always got the big green egg. He's doing all this stuff, like just crazy stuff with meat. And uh, he makes some damn good chili because um, he brought it to Grayson last year. So oh, which man. now this year we're going to have Deanna's chili. So you got big Sweet. shoes to fill. Sweet D's chili. Hey, I, like I said, I'm out here to change people's minds. But there. I'm not opposed to a chili cook-off too because those are fun and I do like a challenge. But I feel like at that point, it would be almost like meat eaters versus the vegetarians, right? <laughs> like a yeah, super that's... meaty chili. But I will say my, I'm saving a hell of a lot more money not having a bunch of meat in my chili. <laughs> there you go. That... I think that's going to be expensive to make a super meaty chili. (laughs) It is. It is. It is. For sure. Especially like good quality stuff. So for sure. Anyways. So what do you got coming up next? What are you running coming up? So like race wise or just. Yeah. Race wise. um, So technically the next race I'm registered for is Lake to Ocean 100K. Right on. That's in June. Uh, that's pretty, it's a pretty gnarly, uh, race, especially being like South Florida in June, it's on the ocean to lake hiking trail, you know, that's part of the, it's like a spur off of the Florida trail and it, t- it goes from Lake Okeechobee to Hope Sound Beach. I did it last year. It was brutal, but I'll be damned if it was not the most beautiful sections of trail I've ever seen in Florida. Like, By the cool. way, <laughs> but it's hot. Things. It's in June. <laughs> like that that's my problem is people lose me on the heat in Florida like they want to make it really difficult yeah. and I'm like if this was in January I would I would do this out and back and out and back and out and back cuz I've seen photos from it and it looks a lot of it looks just like big Cy- cypress section yeah. of the Florida trail which I absolutely love it is you know 
shin deep to knee deep water through bald cypress with air plants. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, you're in the middle of nowhere. It's pretty much not really many bailout points. So you're like fully committed, which I also love. Um, yep. That freaks a lot of people out. Um, but you should totally do something like that. People, if you're listening, do that race if they even have availability or do the trail. Um, I have not done it. I want to do that. The other thing that I think is interesting um, is so it goes from, like from Lake Okeechobee all the way to Hope Sound. You pass through uh, several like wildlife management areas, like I think mm-hmm. Sea Park, um, and you literally end up at the ocean. It's it's just just rad, you know. It's, like that's it's so awesome, and that's why I like it. You know, it's like it is very remote. You know, there are very long stretches where you don't have access to you know your crew because it is a crew required race there's no aid stations you know it's a very small like put on event but it's and like you know you go up to 15 miles for some sections without any access to water or food and it is hot down there in june (laughs) but again like you said it's like you can't bail and it it is so beautiful you know yes and i remember like following your uh or maybe you told me about it afterwards. It's like your adventure last time was like your crew was like Bruce Sung Ho Choi, who I love. I've known him for like 16 years and him and whoever was crewing you, like you were like close to dead last. You wanted to stop and they're like, you're not stopping. And they're all drunk on champagne. They're like, you're not stopping because we want to keep partying. (laughs) They were partying. They were going to this fancy ass Peruvian restaurant getting this amazing food they went to a home goods and went shopping for like house decorations like they were having a great time without me I was out there dying in the woods because backstory I was injured for this race so I struggled and I did want to quit they told me not to quit because they're like we don't deal with quitters and they were all a little you know buzzed or whatever and they we just go to finish. Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> oh my God, they uh, they're a trip, but it was like it was still a lot of fun. Did it mess me up? Yes, but I think I would have been more upset at myself had I quit. And I mostly just wanted to keep going, just see the rest of this course and this trail because it was so beautiful. But they were hilarious. They were just like out there popping bottles, and but they took really good care of me. Let me just say, mm. they did not slack off as a crew. You know, it was Bruce, his girlfriend, Ashley, and then my best friend, Jenny. And they're fun to be around, but they were, they almost had too much fun without me while they're crewing. That's, that's so funny. Yeah, get back so, in the woods. We're going, we're going. But party. yeah, that, that, oh man, mm-hmm. that race and that trail is so rough. I mean, it's like over 40 miles of it is underwater. And so my yeah, feet were wet for nice. close to 18 hours. So yeah. it's rough. And I, you know, I went and just kind of like looked at the FKT from that. Don't know what it is. Don't know who it has it off the top of my head. I apologize. Not ignorant. I'm just, you know, haven't looked that up. But uh, when I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, I went and looked at the dude Strava or whatever. And the guy was like doing like seven minute miles, what? Uh, which, yeah. But again, it's know, like probably dry season. Was, yeah. hundred percent. Right. I mean, that's still insane right like i cannot do that like very few people if anybody can do that but the guy that did it i mean that's epic but big cypress was when i went through that on the florida trail it was the same way the day before it was almost so dry they're like you may not have water when i went to start mm-hmm. the florida trail i delayed my start by two hours because like uh this massive storm system came through and was spinning off tornadoes from like basically jacksonville all the way down to miami and oh, it came through like a wall of water. It was like torrential rain. It was like a, an inch or two of rain. I mean, it was insane. And then it, we thought it was just one wall. It was two. And so when we went through there, I was like, oh, cool. It stopped raining. We'll go. Within five minutes of being out there, it was sideways rain again. Everything was like filling up with water. I mean, it, it, but crazy. it's like it, it probably only would have been five miles of, of wet versus 20 plus miles. So mm-hmm. like you know, it all depends on the rain, especially that time of year when you're getting convective storms every day, you know, it's just dumping rain and rain and rain. Yeah. I can't, I can't imagine. It's it's Um, funny you say that because that's actually almost exactly what happened the night before the Lake to Ocean race last year. And the day before we actually had, it was a legit tropical cyclone had gone through and they were debating canceling it, but it had passed like just in time for us to start. 
And so no. it wasn't raining at all during the, I mean, I think it sprinkled a little bit that morning, but it had brought in like six or so inches of rain just the day before. And so it's funny because they were saying the trail had been so dry that year. They're like, this is the driest we've ever seen the trail. And then this huge storm rolls in the day before and the trail had just, it was so flooded that there were, I remember at one point slogging through water and I looked down and there was a blooming flower just submerged and completely underwater. Right. Yeah, and so that yeah. tells me like that flower was just dry and blooming like yesterday. And it's like literally like six inches underwater, the flower. Wow. Right. And there wow. were floating ant colonies just like there. I mean, like I walked by, like there were fish swimming next to me on the quote unquote trail. That's so awesome. And a baby gator. So. A little baby gator. Did you like grab it real quick or what? No, I just looked at it and I thought, mama's probably close by maybe and i'm just gonna keep on hiking <laughs> you've never been close enough to a baby gator until you know what they sound like they kind of do this like wee, wee. like they do this mm -hmm. really weird squeaking sound don't ask me I why hear, I, I didn't hear it. it was in the water but i did hear gators like croaking at night um yes. when it got dark and i was going through the jonathan dickinson state park yep. that was interesting like just gators, bugs, frogs. I mean, like all critters and wildlife you can imagine, like I saw on that trail. How and beautiful. it was like, I mean, at the end of the day, like it was an adventure and that's why I'm going yes. back this year. So. Oh, so jealous. That's so cool. Um, well, I'm excited that you're doing that. I think you're gonna have another great time. Um, last thing we'll talk about, and then I'll let you go. Appreciate you for being on is like, obviously I'm really excited. And the whole team is uh, that you've joined forces with us and you're a part of run bum races um you know for your the co-race director you're going to be at all the races uh this year for sure um so we've got um brass town ball buster 5k and then of course grace and highlands that you're going to be at and that's really like the first real race you're helping full like you're the per you're the person i'm, the, I'm the only co-rd yeah. there <laughs> yeah you're the only one there and uh it's just me and you dude um but you've been up to Grayson Highlands before. We've got, I think, 800 and something people registered uh, oh, yeah. over the weekend. Um, what, what a beautiful area, you know what I mean? So that'll be, that'll be really cool. Excited to have you on. And, uh, you know, it's just nice having a female co-race director, as I try to always do, you know, because it's kind of like the yin and yang. You know, it's like you see a lot of things that I don't and you understand a lot of things that I don't as a as a male so you know I, again i appreciate you i appreciate what you do i love your chili um i love watching you run i can't wait to see um you're also signed up for no business um, yes so that's that's yes. pretty much that's in the fall and that is my a race for the year you nice. know like doing this croom race was awesome like i wanted to get a fast 50k in this year and i got that you know that was awesome lake to oceans you know my fun sort of adventure race but i pretty much have tunnel vision for no business in october so i'm pretty stoked about that heck yeah heck yeah so well, and dude. i'm really stoked to be you know part of the team now you know like i love running and you know just being more involved in you know the ultra and trail running community and like i love the run bum races i love i mean i'm so excited just to go up to grace and highlands again it's beautiful up there so it's going to awesome. be, it's going to be an awesome year. I'm pretty excited about it. Well, we're excited. And then also, you know, about this, I haven't fully disclosed this yet, but right now I've got two Florida races or we do, should I say we do run bum does, um, which is the wild Florida, um, a 50 K point to point, um, along the Suwannee river in November, that's going on sale in a couple weeks here on April 17th for the race in November. There's a 50K point to point, six mile is a single loop, 12 mile is two loops um, at White Springs, Florida. And then I'm forgotten Florida obviously is always the first weekend in February. It's a hundred miler, which is point, uh, basically you run the, and a 50 miler. So you run the first 50 miles, which is point to point. Um, and then the hundred mile goes on an out and back from there. Um, very crude accessible on that second half beautiful unlike anything else we also have a 15 mile and eight mile but now i'm looking at having a race uh, about within an hour drive of tallahassee i'm really excited that we're gonna have a 50k a 25k and a 10k 
um, which would be awesome. So all this stuff gives money back to the Florida Trail Association, which, you know, I love. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited yeah. about that. That'll be so excited. Next more, March. We need more awesome Florida trail races. So yes, Palms for Forgotten sure. Florida is amazing. I'm so glad I got to run the 100 miler this year. Yeah. Killed like, it. It's, it's incredible. So, yeah. Sweet. Well, thank you for being on, for everybody listening. Um, really want to throw this out there. Make sure you go check out A1A Ultras. Andy and Amy Matthews put on awesome races, Tampa races uh, as well. I think they're 50-50 in that. They help with that. Obviously, it's theirs. Um, awesome races too. Um, so go check that out. And Deanna, thank you for being on and good luck with the chili cook-off. Yeah, I'm excited. We're going to have more chili at the Run Bum races too. Yes, got Grayson got Highlands. Plug that. Grayson, we yes. got Wild Florida yes. and whatever else I can manage to pull off. So, yeah. There you go. So, All right, dude. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. You know, we want to get our facts right. Earlier, Deanna and I talked about the national parks in Alaska you could drive to. Thanks to Scott. He actually fact-checked that. And there are three of eight Alaska national parks that are accessible by road. Those are, of course, Denali National Park um, and Kenai Fords National Park, which, hey, I got those right. The other one I've never heard of is Wrangell St. Elias or Ellis National Park, which requires a really long drive on a gravel road. Also, if you've never been to Alaska, Get yourself up there. It's one of the wildest, coolest places I've ever been. Granted, I was on a cruise ship with my parents when I was much younger. I think I was probably the youngest person on that cruise line. And I heard more Vietnam and uh, grandchildren stories than I've ever heard in my life. But I also saw more beauty than I've ever seen. Um, As always, I really appreciate um, all the love you guys give our races, all the love you guys are giving this podcast. It really makes my day putting on podcasts again. Um, the biggest of thanks goes to Scott Abshire, who is editing this, coming up with ideas for this, and really is the brains behind this. I am just the quote unquote vehicle for for this. And so thanks, buddy. You're amazing. Thank you to Deanna uh, for being on as well. We will have some more uh, podcasts coming up right now. I just went, we did some trail work, Kevin, Sylvie, and I, the beautiful national anthem player, uh, of course, uh, singer rather from gdr we did some trail work on skata summit yesterday then ran a group trail run at the rj rockers run in spartanburg south carolina now i'm headed up to grayson highland state park to go meet with my good friend marcy uh holland uh, the park manager marcy's awesome um very supportive of our events talk about how we can help out even more check out some trails see if we need to do any trail work and uh yeah might see me at a small race this weekend we'll see but regardless much love we'll see all of you on the run very soon